afternoon good evening today we will see regarding the indications of flux or the plasma pheresis the two terms plasma pheresis and flux has been used interchangeably but if we see what exactly plasma pheresis means it is separation of plasma from the blood previously the term apheresis has been in general used to separate the various blood components now therapeutic plasma exchange or the plasma pheresis is being the name is being used regarding the various terminology with respect to this procedure we will see separately here regarding the plasma exchange after separating the plasma from the patient blood if we replace it with fresh plasma that is called as plasma exchange or the flux whereas plasma pheresis simply means separating out the plasma basically what it removes it removes the antibody because it is more concentrated in the plasma in this video we will see the indications of plasma pheresis as per the category of recommendation category 1 recommendation are those diseases where these plasma pheresis are advised as first line of therapy category 2 disorder in which plasma pheresis or flux can be used as an adjuvant to the primary therapy but it has been shown to have benefit Category 3 or group of disease where these kind of plasma pheresis have not shown to have good benefit but the decision can be made by the uh, individual clinical practitioner to wait between the risk and the benefit. Category 4 these are all the group of disease where the plasma pheresis has been tried but shown it is not having much benefit or it is mostly doing harm to the patient so these were the four category of diseases where plasma pheresis can be considered and where the category one and two are the diseases where plasma pheresis has shown to be of good benefit you will see the category one mostly these are all the disease where antibody having a major pathological role first is the gullian barry syndrome anca associated rapidly progressive globulonephritis good pasture syndrome whenever there is a life-threatening symptoms chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyreticulum neuropathy fsgs only if it is recurring in the transplant kidney hyperviscosity because it removes the immunoglobulins liver transplantation for the desensitization not only for liver transplant even for the kidney transplant to remove the preformed antibodies in myasthenia gravis NMDA receptor antibody encephalitis and there's some drug induced CNS conditions and as I told for renal transplant thrombotic microangiopathy if it is due to specific complemented mediated antibodies TTP and also fulminant Wilson disease TTP as per the patient criteria we have to decide upon these are the category 1 recommendation for plasma pheresis where it is shown to be of good benefit. Next is category 2. Flux or this plasma pheresis or the plasma exchange can be considered as an adjuvant to the primary therapy. In acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, in transplantation for desensitization, catastrophic APLA. If the patient is not responding to any kind of immunosuppression, it is a backup. Cryoglobulinemia to remove the cryoglobulins, idiopathic, some conditions where dilated cardiomyopathy patient is not at all responding, there it can be tried. Then Hashimoto encephalopathy in uh, hematopathy stem cell transplantation for desensitization in Lambert Eaton syndrome, in very rare condition where there is no response to multiple sclerosis, myeloma cost nephropathy as a backup treatment. And these are some of the other indication which comes under the category 2 where this can be considered. Severe lupus nephritis where not only lupus nephritis even the other manifestation of lupus erythematosus if the patient if we consider not responding to SL uh, immunosuppressive therapy. Category 3 where there is no like proven or clear cut benefit role but can be tried if other treatments are not working. Anangsholian purpura, very rarely in heparin induced thrombocytopenia, 
ITP, if it is refractory, crescentric, progressive IgN nephropathy. In lung transplantation for desensitization, paraneoplastic syndromes, even in thyroid strom, thyroid strom, toxic epidermal necrolysis, and the list is more lengthy. You can go through one by one. And also in acute liver failure. Even in acute liver failure, plasma pharesis is of like minimal role. Suppose if you think patient is not recovering with any of these conservative management, if the MARS is not available, this can be considered. And the list is very lengthy for category 3. You can go through one by one. And the last category 4, where it is of less benefit. Systemic amyloidosis, polymyositis, HELP syndrome. The lupus nephritis, the category has been now changed. We can try if there is a many, uh, because uh, lupus nephritis, if it is not responding to medication, probably they might be having associated APA. So, in that condition, it comes under category 3. And some drug and used DMA. So, these are all the important indications of plasma pheresis under various categories. Under each category, if you know two or three diseases, that will be well and good for your exam viva.